we are asked to determine whether this integral is convergent or divergent. And the first thing we may notice is that the upper bound of this integral is infinity. So this makes this type of integral known as an improper integral. And the way you proceed with an improper integral is you change the infinity to the variable t. And this will indeed work so long as we take the limit as t approaches infinity. And then you have your expression, which we need to integrate 67 multiplied by e to the x over e to the 2x plus 3. And then it's with respect to x, of course. Now, typically, the next step is to let go of the bounds temporarily and focus your attention on just evaluating the integral. So that's what we're going to do next, is we're just going to step aside, so to speak, and we're going to try to figure out what the integral of 67 e to the x over e to the 2x plus 3 is equal to. And very often in these problems, a u substitution technique will work really well. Sometimes it's not so obvious what to let u equal, though. And I think that's the case in this particular problem. We're going to try to let u equal e to the x and see if that bears us any fruit. Now, one tricky thing here is we have an e to the 2x in the denominator. So before we move on, what we're going to do is actually square both sides of this expression. So we would have u squared is equal to e to the x squared. And then we all recall that when you have a power raised to a power, you can multiply those powers. So this shows us that u squared is equal to e to the 2x. That's an important part of this u substitution. We also can't forget that we have to take our original substitution and compute the derivative. So we're going to differentiate this equation. We have du equals, the derivative of e to the x, of course, is e to the x, and then this will be dx. Next, what we'll do is solve the equation for dx. And to do that, we will divide both sides by e to the x. So now we can see that du over e to the x is equal to dx. So we have this part of our substitution, this important part, and then this important part. Let's go back and try to make the substitutions. We have the integral of 67 e to the x all over. Now remember, e to the 2x we figured out was u squared. So we'll write a u squared here, then we'll have plus 3. And then also don't forget that the dx, we have come up with the expression du over e to the x. And what's kind of nice here is the e to the x in the numerator and the one in the denominator will cancel out. That will leave us with a one in the numerator. So here's what we'll do next. We'll factor out the 67. The 67 doesn't even really matter in this problem. So we'll factor it out. We have now one over u squared plus three. And then this will be du. Now, why is this significant? Well, there is a formula that many of us have learned when learning how to integrate. It looks like this, and it shows us that when you have du over u squared plus a constant squared, you can integrate it in this manner here. Now, this is exactly what we have, because if we multiply one by du, we can actually rewrite this as du over u squared plus three. Now, three is a constant, but what we're going to do is strategically rewrite that as the square root of three squared. Notice that the square root of 3 squared is indeed still 3. And we do that because we want to express it as u squared plus a constant squared. Now, following this formula, we can now integrate. We would have 67 multiplied by 1 over our constant. Now, we've called this constant a. Our constant in this particular problem is square root 3. Then we have the inverse tangent of our u over that same constant, so square root 3. Now, let's not forget, of course, that the u was equal to e to the x. So we actually need to come back here and rewrite this. And we're going to replace the u with e to the x. So we finally have 67 multiplied by 1 over the square root of 3 inverse tangent of e to the x over square root 3. Now, a little more cleanup. 67 times 1 over radical 3. We're basically just going to multiply the 67 by the 1 which of course gives us 67, so we can actually clean it up just a little bit. Whoops. So here's our final integral. Now, once you've integrated, you want to put the bounds back on. So let's not forget that the bounds, the upper bound was t. I actually did forget the lower bound. It was 0. Neat. So that's 0. We're going to do the limit as t approaches infinity. Now, let's plug in the upper bound. So we'll still have our limit. 
And then we're going to have 67 over radical 3 multiplied by the inverse tangent of e to the t over square root of 3. And then we plug in our lower bound. So we're going to have a minus 67 over radical 3 inverse tangent of e to the 0 over square root 3. This should all be in a bracket technically. Now we can go ahead and let t approach infinity. So basically you're going to be plugging infinity in for the t. So it might be easiest for us to just do this. We'll copy this little expression right here and we'll paste it below. But we're going to change the t now to infinity. Now hopefully we realize that e to the infinity is infinity because you're just multiplying the number e an infinite number of times so you get an infinity. Then you divide that by radical 3 which is still infinity. So we actually have in this case right here the inverse tangent of infinity essentially. Now it might be helpful in order to understand that to recall the graph of the inverse tangent function. This is a crude sketch but it looks something like that. And we can see that as x approaches infinity, then the inverse tangent, tangent function actually approaches an upper bound up here. And this upper bound happens to be pi over 2. We may remember this again from a pre-calculus course. So what this means is that the inverse tangent of infinity is actually pi over 2. So what we've circled in red will become pi over 2. We'll have 67 over radical 3 multiplied by pi over 2 minus 67 over radical 3. Now e to the 0 right here, that's just 1. So what we really need is the inverse tangent of 1 over the square root of 3. Most of us know that is 30 degrees. So this right here is equal to 30 degrees. We want that in radians in calculus though, so we're going to do pi over 6. So this is actually multiplied by pi over 6. Finally, to finish off this answer, we can factor out the 67 over square root of 3. This leaves us with pi over 2 minus pi over 6. We need a common denominator, so why don't we multiply this denominator by 3 as well as the numerator. Then you'll have 3 pi minus 1 pi, which is just 2 pi, and that will be over 6 which we can reduce. We can divide numerator and denominator by 2. So this becomes 1 pi, this becomes over 3. We've got an answer. We've got 67 pi over 3 times the square root of 3. And so, because we obtained a finite result, we can say that this integral was indeed convergent.